So in an industry which is dominated by your disposables and your podcasts, it's very rare for one of these things to actually be released. Now, here's the thing. There has been a not significant, but an ever-increasing number of vape companies who are actually now going back down the road of releasing single and dual battery box mods. They are nowhere near as prevalent in the market as they used to be before COVID. So we're talking about 2017, 2018, going into 2019. You used to get a dual battery box mod being released practically almost every week. Now it's a rarity. What we're looking at today is the Armour Max from the fine folks over at Vaporetto. How well does this thing perform? Only one way to find out. It's time for a kit review. So what do you get in the box? Well, you get the Armour Max, obviously, including the tank. You get a spare glass. You get a spare single core coil. Very, very... What's this camera doing? Very, very wide bore in that coil, as you can see. Lots of air. You get your usual braided USB-C charge cable, which you would expect. You get how to lock the device. More about that when we actually have a close-up look at the device. You do, of course, get your safety guide, and you do, of course, get your user manual. So, we're going to concentrate on the tank first of all, because this is the this is the first stock coil sub ohm tank that Vaporess have released for a while. It's the I Tank Two. Let's zoom this in. So they're keeping with the I Tank range. You do, of course, have your uh, out. You come, come on. There we go. Five ten based mouthpiece at the top. Filling this thing up is easy. All you need to do is basically push this little button in and the whole thing just flips over like that. So it's spring mounted on this side to basically just shove this thing over. There's your fill port there, little valve doohickey going on. There we go. Full airflow control, no click stop, air intake there, another air intake on the opposite side and the glass itself is protected by a cage. And it was Adam. Uh, from What's That Behind You, one of the hosts on the UK Vape Show that kind of figured out that this looks a little bit like the old Evic tank. Remember the Evic tanks from a long, long time ago? Very similar idea to the old Evics with that metal shell with the stripes going down. Anyway, let's unscrew you. So you've got the usual push-fit coil going on in here. Let's pull you out. And have a look at this coil. Wide bore, single core. It's already zoomed in, so I can't zoom in anymore. This camera's moving around a bit. I must have forgot to tighten something up. Anyway, so this particular coil, you're looking at best at 70 watts there. And on the other side, you've got 0.2 ohms in mesh. There will be other ohms uh, ratings for this particular tank, as you would expect. So let's pop this coil back in the tank. Screw the bottom down, just like that. And before we pop the cap in, we're going to fill this thing up with... Let's fill it up with some of this. Peach custard, that's what we'll do. Pop you in there. And of course, now the neighbour's dog comes out and starts barking. How are we doing here? Now again, there's no bubble glass for this because of that shell. So the tank itself doesn't really have much of a big capacity going on in here. Um, I think from what I remember, the capacity was something like three and a half mil. So it's not really going to fit a lot of juice. There's a little bit of space still left in here. See if we can get a bit more liquid in there. I think that'll do it. Yeah. So, flip that over, lock it in place, pop the mouthpiece back on, and if this is a new coil you've got in here, as always, set your tank to one side, let that coil soak up the juice onto the Armour Max. This is a big mod. This is a big mod. If I get another mod in comparison, what have I got here? Something else from Vaporesso that 
people will recognise, you know what, we'll get a gen out. Here we go. One of the classic gens. So there is your Vapor SO gen. Now, at first look, it looks very similar in size. But if I do that with it, that's when you start to notice the difference. It's a much, much wider mod than any mods that have come before, like the, the entire gen range. Side to side like that, they look very similar. But when you tilt them to their side, this is much, much wider. And because of that, because of that, like centimetre almost of extra width, people who have got smaller hands, they may not like this mod. They may not like the mod. I mean, people with bigger hands, you're not really going to care that much, to be honest. But anyway, let's start at the very top here. Vic, Vic, is the 510 pin spring mounted, Vic. I'm inside a screwdriver first. There we go. So, 510 pin. Yes, very, very long throw in that 510 pin. At the front, you have got your fire button. That's the fire button in fire mode. Push the fire button up. It's locked. So, it's basically a mechanical lock switch you've got here. Down, fire, up, locked. Main screen, up, down, and your charge port is down there. On the side, you've got grippy bits. On the back, you've got the Vapor SO logo. On the other side, you've got grippy bits. And then we're back to the beginning again. Popping your batteries in here is, of course, rather easy. All you really need to do is... I was finding out which side it was again. This. So it's a, it's a latch mount. The Vapor SO logo at the back, you just... Push that, the bottom door flies open. Now, this could cause a bit of a problem later on. What happens when that little latch mechanism, see it there? That little latch mechanism. What happens if that starts to loosen off? Or what happens if this latch lock here starts to wear down? It basically means you won't be able to shut the battery door. I've never been a fan of the latch mechanism type, the push button type, so... Uh, I don't know, I don't know. You do, of course, have your 18650 adapters there. We're not going to put 18650s in, the, in this, though. So I'm going to put a couple of 21700s. So battery indicators are up here on the door. This side is negative up. This side is positive up. Close you over, and let's have a look at the main screen, shall we? <clears throat> Very small screen. Very small screen. Big lettering here for your wattage. You've got the mode that you're in here and all the other stuff that you need here tiny tiny writing as well tiny writing so down one two three four five that of course switches everything off one two three four five come on there we go switches everything back on again one two three and we're in mode so you've got f mode pulse mode eco mode tcss stainless steel TCNI, Nickel 200, TCTI. Does anyone still use titanium? Seriously, does anyone still use titanium? Because I don't know anyone that still uses titanium. So we're just going to go into normal F mode here. I'm not going to bother with pulse mode. I mean, the whole eco thing and all the rest of it. Just go into that. And then we're going to just crank this up. Max wattage of... 200, well, well, you know, with a couple of 21700s in here, you may actually hit the 220. But if you're going to go for dual 18650, yeah, no chance. 220 watts, and it doesn't round robin. And you've got a minimum of 5 watts. And there we go, folks. That's the Armour Max. Let's head back round and see how this fella goes. Before we do that... Fuck. Yeah, you know what's coming. My throat's not in the best condition, right? So, oh, we need to do the high wattage test. Goon. Uh, I don't know what one this is. I think it's the Mark 1 Goon I've got, I've got on here. Right. Crank you all the way up to 220. This, this is not going to be fun Especially the current state my throat's in This is not going to be fun at all 
220 watts and it might actually be 220 because there's a couple of 21 700s sitting in here and we're off <laughs> <laughs> This, this is the face of instant regret. That's what this is the fucking face of. Um, that was hot. That was hot. Is it hitting the 220? Well, I can tell you now, if you do have a couple of, if you've got a couple of 18650s in here, it won't. It simply won't. 21700s, however, not 20, but 21700s, you may have a better chance of hitting that 200 or hitting that 220, but it's, it's hot. Put it that way, it's just hot. So I'm going to get the iTank 2 and put it back into full kit form. We're not going to hit this tank at 220 watts because that'll just burn the fucking coil out. So instead... Oh, right, I've locked it for some reason. How the hell did that happen? Unlocked. There we go. Uh, we'll go for 80, first of all. Ah, uh, yes, low controls fully open. It's <laughs> fully open. Oh. Right, let's crank you up a bit more for a hundred. Hundred watts last time. That'll do. There is nothing wrong with that flavour. Ah. <coughs> Absolutely nothing wrong with that flavour. I've still got... I've still got traces of the cotton crud in my chest. It's 1 one thing about Vapor SO that you can almost guarantee... It's the same as you will, right? But there's one thing about Vapor SO you can guarantee. Their coils are going to be good. Doesn't matter what tank you're using. Doesn't matter what device you're using. Their coils are going to be good. I've yet to come across a bad vapor SO coil. Yet to come across one. That is seriously good flavour. Seriously good. There we go, folks. That is the vapor SO Armour Max. What do I think of this? The eyes and the nose. We'll start off with the tank. Now, they sacrificed capacity for armour because, hey, that's what the bloody thing's called the Armour Max. They've sacrificed tank capacity for this armoured shell along the outside. Does not come with a bubble glass. Just doesn't come with one because this thing gets in the way. So you're looking at a very small capacity tank going on here. Even for its size, and it's a relatively tall tank for a stock coil sub over, but you are looking at a straight glass tank, which means that the capacity of this thing is going to be rather short compared to other stock coil sub ohm tanks they got released at the beginning of this year from the likes of uh, Smock, for instance, that are roughly the same height as this, it will mean you're going to be filling this tank a lot more than other stock coil sub -ohm tanks. However, if you're a ham-fisted idiot, like I am, the armour on the tank means that if you drop this, if you're like a taxi driver or you're a truck driver climbing up into your cab and your mod falls out, you are less likely to damage the tank because this has almost got full armour protection all the way round. You've only got the little slots here to actually see how much juice you've got left in the tank. So if you're out and about a lot, taxi driver, cab driver, van driver, delivery driver, this might come in handy. But again, you're going to be filling it a lot. No bubble glass option. Flavour, that's what you would expect from a Vapor SO coil. You're getting fucking phenomenal flavour out of this. Seriously good flavour. Got the peach custard in here, but Vapor SO were kind enough to send a spare pack of coil. Not send, I actually picked this up at the expo two weekends ago. They were actually kind enough to give me a spare pack of coils as well. And peach custard, black vine, chocolate, basically all of the Rochford project line, zero complaints, right across the board from the fruity sweet ones like the black vine to the much more denser, sticker custards like I've got in here. Zero issues. Flavour was phenomenal across the board. Just phenomenal flavour across the board. 
But you would expect that from a company like Vapor S, though. You would. What's a lot? Now we're on to the mod. Now, as you've seen down in the table cam, overall dimensions, side to side and top to bottom, you're looking at basically a gen. That's what you're looking at. You're looking at one of these fellas. Where the fuck did it go? Oh, there it is. You're looking at a gen. Side to side, top to bottom, you're looking at a gen. It's roughly the same height. It may be slightly bigger width-wise, but not by much. Now, remembering that the gen, this little fella here, when this got released, it was a dual 18650. Not 21700s. I don't think there's been a gen released that wasn't an 18650. So this is a dual 18650. This is dual 21700. And there isn't much difference in the height. And there isn't much of a difference in the width. Where the difference is though, is front to back. This is a much bigger mod front panel to back panel, and it's the front panel to back panel measurements where people with smaller hands, like me, have a bit of a problem with grip. If you've got small hands, you might not like the Armour Max because it's a much wider mod front to back because it is dual 21700s. For people with bigger hands, you're not going to care. You're just not going to care. The mod itself has got that Armour look along the sides. There is the, along the sides here, it's like a thick ABS plastic so it can take the dents if you're going to drop this thing. Basically what they were doing with this, I think Vaporesso were trying to go down the road of an Aegis but not actually copy the Aegis like Smock did several times in a row. But they're trying to go down the road of the Aegis so what you've basically got here is an armor gen. Basically what you're looking at, you're looking at an armor gen. They are still using the same class. Well, it's not the same class. They're still using the old... Let's pop you out and open you up. There we go. That chip, the Axon chip, obviously it's not the same one that's in the gen. It's an updated one that you've got inside the Armour Max. But, yeah, I mean, the only downside I can see with this is its overall, its overall dimensions. Some people don't like using big mods. Now, the Gen was not classed as a big mod because front panel to back panel it was very thin due to it being 18650. But because they switched to 21700, Vapor SO were basically forced to make that mod a little bit fatter. And not only that, they've covered it in the shell armor as well. So if you drop the thing, it's not going to immediately fall apart. Like the gen had a nasty habit of doing some, especially the older gens. If you dropped an older gen, the back battery panel fell off, the batteries fell out, and nine times out of ten, half the guts fell out with the damn mod because it cracked at the screw points. With this, it's not going to happen. And because they've got the door on a switched latch, you're less likely to have the battery door pop open as well because it's not a full panel battery door but it's the overall dimensions that might put some people off. And it's also a rather heavy mod. There's a lot of plastic on the outside, but the base of the actual mod itself, the main chassis, is zinc alloy. And if you couple that with a couple of 21700s, you end up with a rather heavy mod. A rather heavy mod. About four times the weight of the Vapor SO Gen series. It's, it, it is, it's definitely heavy. Anyway... All in all, though, for a return to dual battery 21700 box mods, it's a pretty good bit of kit. It's definitely a pretty good bit of kit. Personally, I would have liked to have seen a much more cleaner looking mod. Maybe the reintroduction of the Gen series, but in 21700 form, rather than this big bulky thing with the big bulky armor tank on top. But hey... I suppose Vapor SO wanted to go down a different road. I'm thinking that's what they were trying to do. The flavour from this tank, though. So good. So good. That was the Vapor SO Armour Max. Very interesting bit of kit. Big thanks to Vapor SO for sending it over for a review. If you thought this review sucked, you know what to do below. 
thought it was good, give it a thumbs up. Very fast at the top of your latest video, no matter what video you're watching on the channel. And if that's latest what's up, Sunday update vlog in the middle. Shout out to the hashtag Flu Family, the Patreon subscribe stars, and the YouTube members of keeping Vic afloat financially. That's what's keeping me in a job, and underneath me is the Vaping with it logo. Click on that to subscribe. As always, folks, thanks for watching, and have a good one.